Good evening, everyone. How you doing? To our audience at home, to our audience here in the studios, let me introduce you up close and personal to a man that uh, probably has been more maligned and more praised than any civil rights leader since uh, Martin Luther King. His name is Al Sharpton. He was born in 1954 in Brooklyn. At the age of 12, he worked for Congressman Adam Clayton Powell. At the age of 14, he worked for Jesse Jackson's Operation Breadbasket. At 16, he was called God's Wonder Boy Preacher, the Anointed Lamb. The same age of 16. Pardon me? You can read the wrong papers, but go ahead. That's all right. <laughs> the, age of, the age of 16, he founded the National Youth Movement. All right? That's right. Nineteen seventy-nine, he set up a group called the Urban Leadership Conference. He's been very active in civil rights, community rights, and uh, I want to go to home base to Al Sharpton to introduce him and ask him some questions. First, let me intro a tape for you folks at home and for our gang in the studio audience. Now, unless you've been in a coma for the last few weeks, here's a short clip of uh, Reverend Al's idea of uh, fun in New York City. Let's see that clip. You're probably, you're pro you and Roy Orbison are probably the most recognizable, controversial faces in New York City. But for someone with your high visibility, no one seems to really know much about your background. Who's the real Al Sharpton? Well, I, first of all, I think that is incorrect. I think that the people in the community that I come from and try to serve know a lot about my background, have known me for years. Uh, one of your guests tonight can attest to that. I think that the people that have tried to stop an insurgent movement with all kind of uh, uh, scandals and truths and half-truths and outright lies uh, can't find what they want in my background. So they claim that I'm just so mysterious because they can't put their teeth into what they want to put their teeth into. Then the other question becomes, that all of these guys that are doing the investigating, we don't know them at all. And we're going to pull the covers off of some of them tonight. All right, you've done over two uh, dozen press conferences in the past few weeks, and uh, basically to deny that you're a federal informant. Let me say right off the bat, if Al Sharpton, Reverend Al Sharpton, has assisted our government in any way in getting to the bottom of drugs in this country, in this community, bravo. And anyone who thinks it's wrong to cooperate with the government to help the FBI or the Justice Department or anyone else, I think is full of <laughs> all right? So if that's the case, if you've uh, helped the government, I see nothing wrong with that. Uh, but basically what people are saying is, are you a rat fink, or is the FBI trying to discredit you in the black community? Well, I don't think uh, that the question becomes the FBI or whoever the sources are. I think there are a few questions. One, the question becomes, what is the motive of some... Uh, media institutions that are all controlled outside of our community uh, in trying to raise a question now if they really thought that I was informing on mobsters and drug guys and even criminal guys that are black as they have always tried to depict uh, uh, my friend Don King as then what would be their motive of trying to break it to protect them I mean the only ones that benefit from this is those that they claim we were trying to target, or they really never believed we were targeting them, they were just trying to start a whole smear campaign. From your lips to God's ear, have you been informing on any notorious figures to help this country's government? I have informed uh, in the sense of giving information, both public and in private, on dr uh, drug information that we receive, and you're going to talk to one of the guys that collect that for us, uh, we have given information in one case where a guy threatened to uh, harm us because we threatened to boycott on a particular concert tour. Uh, but let, let's deal with what is an informant. An informant is a paid operative of the government. I was never that. Not necessarily. Well, Not necessarily. I've supplied the government with information. But does that make you an informant? 
Yeah, it makes me informing the government of information. No, no, no. I still to inform with information. Well, in that context... are getting context, into semantics. So it's not oh, no, the no, no, no. That. The reason I'm getting into semantics is because you, you, there is a difference between someone that the government plants somewhere for information and in someone that stands up and gives information. There's a big difference. But they're informants, all right? The other guy, the other guy who plants it is a no, think. No, the, the, the difference is that the guy the government plants is there because the government planted him there. Have you ever been planted by the government? Absolutely not. Never? No. All right, now, for a reverend with no congregation, you've used the media, really, as your... Well, uh, well, well, first of all, Billy Graham has no congregation. He uses the media. Jesse Jackson has no congregation. I mean, that, that is an absurd charge. What church is Billy Graham pastor? What church is Jesse Jackson pastor? Do I you mean, pastor revivals? Do I do what? Pastor revivals? I run revivals, yes. But you don't pastor a revival. You, you pastor a church. Do you run re Do you, you know, you see... You, wait, 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 wait. You know, we seem to be getting into semantics, and that can end well, up no, with a lot I'm, of BS I'm, that gets us no Well, I'm answering your question. Right. There's no such thing as pastoring a revival. Right. Do I run revivals? Yes. Do I preach at churches? Yes. I was preaching at Salem Missionary Baptist Church Sunday, 11 o'clock. You should come out. <laughs> Where's the... Where is it located? It's on Albemarle Road and East 21st Street. East 21st Street? Yeah, and Albemarle Am Road. Am I okay Flatton. in there? Well, uh, you'd have to check with the FBI, I guess. Why don't you check for me? I'll try. When we, when we come back, we'll meet Reverend Sharpton's chief accuser. Stand by. Hey, if you like me at 9, you're going to love me at 11. Don't miss the special late-night edition of the Morton Downey Jr. Show, all next week at 11. Welcome back, everybody. Again, joining us at home base, of course, the Reverend Al Sharpton. And joining us now at home base, Bill Bastone, who is a writer for The Village Voice and has been there for four years. He writes the uh, Running Scared column, I believe. Al, right before we go to Bill, let me ask you a yes or no answer, if it's possible to get a yes or no answer. Have you at any time ever assisted our government on in getting information on the mob or organized crime? In, 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 in the case of a, a mob, so yes. Okay. That's fair enough. Bill, question for you. Your cover story in the Village Voice recently painted a less than flattering portrait of Reverend Al Sharpton. You accuse them of conning everyone and uh, really almost being a flim-flam man. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that uh, Reverend Sharpton has been a, a phenomenon for the last two years. But if you look back in the history of his you know, activity in Brooklyn dating back to the late 70s, it's been a decade where if you chart what he's been involved with and who he's been involved with, I don't think that he's the, the next great civil rights leader. Are, are they proven charges or are they allegations? Because I go back in my mind and remember back, and I happen to have been a great admirer of, uh, of Mr. Hoover, but uh, when you really study Hoover after his demise, we see what he did to Martin Luther King, and he made the guy out to be a child abuser, studied in Moscow, all kinds of <laughs> that just had no ring of truth to it. Is the same thing happening to Al Sharpton? Oh, absolutely not. I mean, if you just want to look at the organized crime connections, they are the most well-documented. I mean, we can get, he'll have explanations about how he was raising funds in the late 70s for a group using the, Martin Luther King's name, using Adam Clayton Powell's name when uh, the King family and Powell's family never, never agreed to have their fam family members' well, names used. strange because just uh, three days ago, and two people here that are witnesses of that, Martin Luther King III and Dexter Scott King held a press conference with us in Atlantic City, and they have been very active with us lately. I think also that it's the epitome of arrogance for you coming from a paper that uh, has people that have a political uh, axe to grind uh, who are working very closely with the people that we are attacking now and who doesn't even have a black on the editorial board would sit up and talk about who can be the next civil rights leader. I mean, a bunch of ex-hippies uh, running around trying to decide on who's a black leader it's ridiculous. Bill doesn't, well, Bill, I, Bill you know, doesn't look like a hippie to me. No, 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 I said X. X hippie. Well, there's nothing wrong with being an X anything. No, but I mean, Mr. Bastone ought to be open about the voice of interest in anybody. 
Mr. Jack Newfield, who co-wrote the article with him, is a political consultant to Governor Cuomo, who we have been fighting for the last year to get a permanent special prosecutor. Mr. Uh, no, no, no. You're, the the no, point here is about your ties to organized well, crime. It is not right, about, about, about the editorial let's board. About who's talking let's about let's talk time. first. 1980. Let's talk about who's talking about this. Bill, go ahead. Let's, let's hear, let's hear, knowing that you guys are pretty thorough, let's hear some of no, the, but just the don't ties. Like you object. And, and what do you really these, mean these by... Are, these now, are let me, facts let me, let me hear court this. papers and in testimony. Okay, what's the let me, let me Let me put it okay, out, and then, you can, me, and then you can give me... And then you can... Is that a fact? He's a, he's a senior editor at The Voice. A, is he also a consultant to Mario Absolutely Cuomo? not. Oh, he's not. What do you mean a consultant? He is... Wait, uh, Jack We're Newfield getting off the is, point here. The is point is you. Well, let's, let's not, let's not. We'll do another show on Newfield, all right? Fine. No, no, no. Well, I want, when you raise the story, <laughs> story uh, Bill, you make the allegations. Can you substantiate okay, them? 1980, uh, Reverend Sharpton was involved with uh, a gentleman by the name of Matty the Horse Ianello. You may have heard of him. He's a captain in the Genovese crime family. Reverend Sharpton came out in the 1986 federal trial of Mr. Ionello. And will it that in 19 it Let me finish. Let me finish. That in 1980, you, according to the government, were fronting for a garbage company called Consolidated Carding, That's which you true. proposed that you had a 51% interest in, and true. you wanted Con Ed's business. That is not true. Government what the government said in the trial. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. But consolidated but, but, but first carding. of all, you're inaccurate. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Rebut. That Consolidated Carding is a company that has been controlled by Ianello and members of the Genovese family for years. 1980, you and I guess a couple of associates approached Con Edison in trying to get a piece of the minority set aside contracts. To is there anything wrong with that? Con though? Absolutely not. Right, now, question is, question, well, let me just finish. Well, how, did it come about, how did it come out that how did it come out that you were going to have 51 percent of a company without any without any monetary input on your part? How did it come about that you were hooked First up? First of all, Mr. Bastone, I had a lot of respect for your research until now because okay. obviously you don't read the government papers. The government papers, which we're reviewing because we're playing a, a nice little lawsuit for for you and your friends at Newsday. But anyway. <laughs> The government paper said that we were looking to buy into a carding company called Consolidated. That Consolidated already had a contract with Con Ed. So if I was dealing with the mob, Con Ed was dealing with the mob. That we had a proposal to take over. F read your own article. Go ahead. A proposal to take over 51% that we had not consummated. How did it Just come about that you... You didn't want me to interrupt you. You don't did interrupt, interrupt me. me. Now... That when we met with Con Ed, and our attorney for that was Clarence Jones, who was then publisher of the Amsterdam News, Correct. representing a consortium of people, and they told us the charges about this man, Mr. Ionello, who we had never met and still have never met. We with You knew who he was now. I never, how would I know of a man I never met? They raised him there. But let me... Let me Sir, when you were at the Con Ed meeting, they brought up Ionello's involvement, and you said... That's no concern of ours. No, read your article. My oh, lawyer, it's, in the, it's in the transcript. When they brought up at the Con Ed meeting that there were allegations about uh, Matthew Ionello, I said, if we're going to control this company, I have no concern. When they said that we don't think they'll let you control it, that is when Mr. Jones investigated. But let me get all this clear for you, Mr. Bastone, because we're not little uh, uh, nice kids playing games here. We later found out that Mr. Ionello is allegedly who you say, Matty the Horse. I will put on the record, we were trying to get blacks in the carding business. I will meet with Matty the Horse or Elsie the Cow to try to put black people in business. And I don't care whether you like it or not. I have nothing against Fine. it. Next Bill, tell me how it right, came me, about that you were hooked up with Ionello's company. I just explained it to you. But just, Bill, I don't want to keep it right Can you hear? Let, let's, pro let's progress just a little bit. You state in your article that the reverend who professes to lead an anti-drug crusade actually spends his days with known drug traffickers. Name them. Name them. That's em. not what we said. Back what up. we said. You did say that, it. That's not what we said. Well, Martin, I read the wrong edition then, because I read the same thing. You, 
Let me ask my producer, is that, is that what it said? Is that what it said in the article? I don't want to put Bill on the spot and put words into his mouth that weren't said. That's it's what not, said. Well, it's not exactly correct. Right. I'll tell you. Oh, no, I, well, exactly let, me, let me talk. So they're not exactly drug trafficking. Here's the point. The point is, is that what you, what you have made sure that tries to get glossed over is the fact that you were videotaped in 1983, and it was not the first time you were videotaped. You walked into that room. You're, you're, what you're saying is that you were entrapped. That they well, led why you don't down. You let me Let's say what finish. I'm saying. You make your point. Don't tell me what I'm saying. This is what you're quoted in the newspaper. He's quoted as saying he was led down the primrose path, and it was he was uh, stung by this FBI agent. Who is was that posing. a possibility? No, it's not a possibility. Why? Be because what happened is that he showed an interest. And he can. It, it comes down to the point here where the only way it's for certain is if the videotape is shown. And Reverend Sharpton presumably has the power to petition the FBI, petition the Eastern and the Southern District, and ask that the tape be played. And that will, be, that will put to rest our okay. side that says you were willing, for you, this was a, your gambit, that you said you could put Quintana together with Danny Pagano. You say you were stung. Right, what can you do about getting the well, video let me hear, tape? Wait, let wait, me wait, hear what you say. All, first were you of stung, all, Al? First of all, were you stung? No, I, I was attempted to be stung. If I had been stung, I'd have been indicted or put in front of a grand That's jury. That's not correct. What, well, it's not correct. Me, are you going to answer for both of us, or are you going to I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what you say is not correct. It's not correct. But, but first of all, you didn't answer his question about me running with known drug traffickers. You, you run with the mafia. Who? They, who? Danny Pagano. I run with Danny Pagano? You certainly do. Where? Huh. <laughs> you were... Is it true or not that you were picked up on his phone, a bug on Danny Pagano's I was, phone? I was picked up on a conversation they claim that I have not heard. That, that means I run with Danny Pagano? You admitted that it occurred. What you occurred? told Newsday. I told Newsday what? That you were picked up on no, a no, no, wire. No, no, no. I said to Newsday that the state uh, Organized Crime Task Force also headed the same state that your friend Newfield's governor had, said that they picked up a tape conversation with Danny Pagano and I. I talked to a lot of people. That, does that mean I hang with them? I talked to Mart on the phone. We don't hang together. You said I hang with drug traffickers. Are you calling Mort, Danny a drug Mort, Are you calling? Mort, it's not a, Mort, are you it's calling? Not a are you? Are you calling Danny Pagano a drug trafficker? I yes or no? I am calling him a captain in the Genovese no, crime the family. No, question was a drug trafficker. A convicted felon. Is he convicted he of trafficking he, drugs? That, that does not mean if you... The question was, why you said I hang with no drug traffickers? Hell, Maybe. I thought I was asking the questions here. When we come back, we're going to hear more from Bill and more from the Reverend. Stand by. Hey, if you like me at 9, you're going to love me at 11. Don't miss the special late-night edition of the Morton Downey Jr. Show, all next week at 11. There have been some voices, there have been some voices in the audience tonight who have said, what the hell are they talking about? What is this all about? Simplify it for you folks one more time. If you've been in a coma and haven't been reading the papers or watching the news, there have been some pretty stiff accusations made against uh, what some people refer to as the new civil rights movement uh, leader of the 1990s, Al Sharpton, that, uh, I'll give you a quote. Sharpton is not above consorting with the same mafioso who put heroin in the arms of Brownsville children, and he did it without prodding by law enforcement. We're trying to get to the bottom of that tonight. We've got with us on uh, home base Bill Bastone, who is a writer for the Village Voice, and one of the uh, putters together of the article recently appearing in the Village Voice. We are joined at one of our loudmouths now by Tom Watkins, who is a publisher of the Daily Challenge, which is a black newspaper. Perry, uh, who is a member of the National Youth Movement, and on home base, our regular guests. You guys were talking. Let me go to Tom Watkins for just a second. Tom, good evening. Thanks for being with us. Good evening. Do you regard the Reverend as a legitimate leader in the black community? Surely. Surely. Reverend Sharpton. <laughs> Let me explain. We're, we're not talking about a Johnny come lately or someone <coughs> that has just popped up in the black community. We're talking about Reverend Sharpton. And we're talking about a newspaper who has tried to use an issue to gain popularity in the black community, and it backfired. 
but it gave the black community an opportunity to stand behind one of its own, one who has been out there for 25 years, one who has supported causes for 25 years. Civil rights, civil rights is gone. We're moved into that. We've got that pretty well in hand. We're moving towards political rights and economic rights. Right. And we're talking about the, econ the economy here, economic, politics, voting together, buying together. That's what we're talking about. And we're standing up behind our Sharpton because it's a deliberate attempt to diversify and disunite the black community. Well, you know, here's what always bothers me when we start attacking a guy, all right, uh, whether he's black, white, or any other color. When we go back into their childhood and the things that they did as youths, uh, you know, I'm no virgin myself, baby. I've been in the big, biggest gutters you've ever seen. But does a guy like Al Sharpton have to be Caesar's wife to be a leader in the black community, white community, or any other community? Leadership is assuming leadership. Mm -hmm. He's assumed it. Assuming leadership. Has he been accepted as a leader? been accepted for what he's trying to do. All right, well, let's take a look at his national youth movement. I personally doubt if there's more than 30 members of the national youth movement. Perry, you're a member well, of the national youth movement. You ever been to any meetings with members of the national youth movement? Every meeting, Mort. How many folks turn up? Well, just like any other organization, some few sometime, a lot of times the, room, the, the whole room is full. Uh, we Are they run all a members when they're yeah, there? Yeah, see, we run a community-based operation. We talk to and deal with people in the community. Where do you get your money from? Where we get our money from? We work for it. We work How for do you it. work for it? We work for it. We go out and we work. Doing we what? bring the money in. Doing what? Well, fundraising? We, yep, fundraising, concerts. We go out to concerts and you stuff do like that. You concerts work. like the Michael Jackson tour? We work. How about the Michael Jackson tour? I've never worked the Michael Jackson tour. Al, did you ever get uh, up to 8,000 tickets uh, per concert for the Michael Jackson no, tour? No, there was never up to 8,000 tickets given at any one Michael Jackson show or any other show. And this so-called uh, tape that the state has about tickets to Lionel Richie's show, there were no tickets donated at the Lionel Richie show. And if the state has a tape, just like he says, I have the power to get the other uh, videotape of the uh, so-called uh, drug situation, which I will do, the state ought to release this tape and prosecute me, or he needs to shut up about it, because this is a tape that's a year and a half old. There. Are you saying that you'll pursue the FBI? Let me ask you a question. Well, if you ask me, I will ask you. I will answer you your me. question. Will you yeah, I, oh, we, we are already medics? pursuing it. How we are already doing pursuing it. No, I answered. I'm not. I'm not going to tell you how we're going to pursue a legal matter. I'll tell you. We well, are, I'll tell you why. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Me. Wait a minute. It's just because, one minute. Just one yeah, minute. Bill, I answered one of your questions. I asked you to say something. And you let me in. Have you seen this videotape? Which videotape? The one that you referred to. There's been a number, Reverend Sharpton. Have you seen any of them? No. Then how can you say that I ought to take okay. willingly did something that you yourself have not seen? Why don't you admit to people that you're going by sources? That's exactly correct. All right, now, if your sources have a political motive to distort something, that means that you're raising incorrect information. You yourself don't know what you're saying is true or not. Sir, sir. Is may, that true? May, I must tell you that the people who the, remember the story broke in Newsday. And whoever leaked the story to do news, they may have had some sort of a political purpose in mind. But they have. That, I'm asking but you. the point is, you is can't that, attest to the accuracy of the tape or not firsthand. Of course not. But if 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 but you that's have, not what you're saying. Rely, that reporter, is not what you're saying. Well, let me tell you, Reverend Sharpton. If a reporter had to rely on on seeing every fact firsthand, newspapers would not be published. But I don't think you think it cannot be. It cannot be in every place at every time. I think. I think that if newspapers can print articles with unnamed sources and accuse people of criminal activity, that just like the person ought to ask for the tape, the newspaper ought to say who gave them the source. Suppose if Have the you ever just told a reporter and told him this is off the record. I don't want my name used with it. No, never. Did we ever have a, we have a conversation about a particular individual about a year ago you wanted to tell me some information about? That I never told you because I know that with you it was not off the record. Were, were, was it going to be off the record? No. You, you Bill, want to play those games? Bill, with you? No, fuck that. But, no. but wait a minute. Let me get back to the, the point of the matter is this. Whether the people agree with my political positions or not, if the tape and when the tape is put out and the tape does not show what you say, your source is protected. 
The only one that's not protected here is me. Your source doesn't have to walk around and say he's a liar. So why should people have to sit up and defend themselves against guys that don't have the guts to come forth and say, Al Sharpton, you did so-and-so, but I'm supposed to come back because you claim to have a source and defend myself. Do you have the guts to come forth with the name of the man that you said that you gave information Saul on Saul Pasillo. That's guts. Now give me the name of your source. Oh, uh, hush That's not what we spoke about. Son. Give me the name aren't, of your son. Aren't you afraid by giving no, 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 Aren't you afraid son. by giving Lord, information? I a long time for this. Aren't, Give up your son. aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid? Give up your son. Aren't you afraid right. the it mob was one is of your press releases? That's a lie. My press releases told you a I'm video thing. Right oh, come on. on. Don't joke. Don't what? joke. When it comes down to you having to answer questions. Let's dance and prance. Perry, you want to say something. To you. Yeah, want Perry, to say jump something. in here. You want yes, to say yes, something? Yes, I want to say something. Mr. Bastone, do you know who I am? Harry McKinnon, sir. That's right. When did you find out my name? Uh, a few days ago. A few days ago. Now, you say Reverend Short, Sharpton's running with drug pushes and stuff. You spoke of Brownsville. Let me ask you something, Mr. Bastone. Do you know what I do for a living? Tell me, sir. What do you no, do no. for a do living? No, no. Do you know? Obviously, I you don't, You know about sir. tape. You tell me. You know? You tell me. What I'm the guy that Reverend Sharpton is running with. I'm the guy that got all the drug information. It's me. Uh-huh. And you want to know something, Mr. Bastone? Certainly. You know, you know what our community is tired of? Because I live in the community. You don't. You just write lies about it. I'm on the streets every day. Okay. And I want to tell you something. You're involved else. in drugs, Perry? That's right. I find them. I get the information up. And it's me. I'm here with my name and my face on TV. I'm the guy that coordinates those you investigations. Ever sell them? What's that? You ever sell them? Nope. I just find them. Okay. How sir, do you, you find them? Sir? How do you find them? How do you find them? I'm a professional investigator. I have a police background. I'm an ex-captain in Special Forces, four tours in Vietnam, Mr. Bastone, and I live in that same Brownsville, Bestman Stuyvesant. So Are I'm there every day. No, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. Don't and one thing, one thing in our show. community we dislike <laughs> is a white paper. Well, you don't even have nobody from Brownsville, Bedford, Stuyvesant on your editorial board. How do you get your information about what's going on in my neighborhood? But in you don't fairness, come in there. Perry, in fairness to this, <laughs> what you say is a white paper, remember, they have always been known as a great liberal moving That's force. That's not true. Trying to pick our great liberal. More, are, they you say, you guys, no, are they after you guys no, because wait a minute, maybe... Wait a minute, no. Sheesh, listen. No, no, that's not ah, true. listen. Are they after you guys maybe because the new black leadership in this country is becoming more conservative? No. They are after anybody that them and the beatniks on the editorial board can't control. They have attacked, they have attacked Vernon Mason. They have attacked Sonny Carson. They have attacked Alton Maddox. They have attacked every leader that they can't pick up the phone and say jump, and he calls them back from midair. Were, Were they the wrong? The only newspaper who endorsed Vernon Mason for district attorney. And turned around and attacked him when the new leadership started I, I do not recall you being in the, active in that campaign. Well, the village oh, voice was a hell of a lot Mason. more active well, than you All you have to do is call Vernon Mason. All right, Al, Reverend. Reverend. And you're in Reverend. Reverend. Bill, Reverend. In 1978, mm -hmm. did you register in two districts to run for an office? No. Never did? I was registered in a district. I moved and registered in another district. Mort, Mort. Uh, it should be noted that, um, that when, when Reverend Sharpton uh, last voted was 1978. But that's not true. Say that again, because I want to part of the lawsuit. Look at that, Kim. Tell that time, lie again. The last Loud time you voted, according to Board of Elections, no, don't, 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 according to don't, City don't Board of Elections, was 1978. You said, oh, now you're going to duck behind a record. You first said... Here it is. That, that, Let's hear this information from Bill. Wait a second, Reverend. We've let you talk. Let's, Bill, let's hear it, Bill. This is on record at the Board of Elections office in Brooklyn, the borough which Reverend Sharpton lives in. Is that the borough I always lived in? Let me finish. I asked you a question. You said that since, since 1978, I only lived in Brooklyn. Since 1978, Reverend Sharpton registered as a Democrat in February of 1984. 
on the form. On, you. <laughs> on the form, it asks, in what year did you last vote in an election in this state? And in 1984, in his hand, Al Sharpton wrote 1978. Well, so from let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. From 19. From that is not what let you me say. finish. That is not what let you let say. me finish. From 1978 through 1984, you admit by your own hand, you, in what year did you last vote in an election in this state you hadn't voted? When you registered in February of 84, according to the back side of this, where you sign or every time an affidavit or an absentee ballot is sent in, there's an indication here. There's one signature the day you registered. So that means in 1981, you didn't vote against Ed Koch, who you professed to. Have some 1981. big problems. 1985, you didn't oh. vote against them. 1984, when Jesse Jackson was on the Democratic primary in New York, you didn't vote for him. And you didn't vote against Ronald Reagan in 84. Let's hear it from Al. Let's hear it from Al. According, first of all, you said I had not voted since 1978. This is 1988. You show us a document signed in 84 that says I did not vote in the state of New York. Where did you vote? I voted in Georgia, where I was living in 1980 Why is it all? Do you have, do you have, do you have a voter card? I now live back in New York. Well, so you, I mean, but all your so press releases say you're a lifelong Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. You made a state. What press release said that? What press release said that? Not press release, your biography. All right, let's oh, come back to these gentlemen, all right? Let's come back to these gentlemen. We're going to take a break, and we'll hear more about the National Youth Movement. Hey, if you like me at 9, you're going to love me at 11. Don't miss the special late-night edition of the Morton Downey Jr. Show, all next week at 11. Okay. Let's see if we can cut through some of the semantical bull and get to the bottom line here on some things. Perry, you wanted to add some points here. I want to hear about the National Youth Movement, all right? I believe that it's a front organization that really does nothing. Where do you get your money from? Okay, first of all, that's not a front organization. We are active members. Now, how, many active active membership, mem how many active members do you active have? Active membership. How many active membership do you have? Active membership. It's an active membership. How many people in that active membership? No. No, Perry would know. Right now, we got active, active. We got a long roll of just members. Where, you know, who's not active all the time. 3,000? Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second, let Perry answer. 3,000, Perry? Thank you. Not 3,000. 300? No, we're talking about 300, 350 people. 300, 350 yeah, that people? Yeah, I work, I meet with, I'm part of the leadership. That's an organization that's been in business, Al, since when? 1970, 1972? It was, it was originally incorporated in 71 when I was 16. We picked it back up and became active again around 1983 when I came back off the road. And so it's been active now for, uh, this would be the fifth year. It has been reactivated. This and would be the uh, fifth year. It's never accounted with the state attorney general's office. And these are hard, and these and are hard to, uh, a lot of uh, organizations well, we're talking around. About your we organization. See, we're we not see, talking about, we're talking about the we National We couldn't see movement. that we have not filed the papers with the attorney general's office. And we are... Why haven't you? We have not filed them. A, because we never started raising money again until two years ago. There was nothing to file. And we're presently negotiating our filing with them now. Mr. Maddox and Paula Gelman spoke just two days ago. We're working that matter out. That we openly admit. But to say that we haven't voted because he can't find a way voted and that we're running with heroin dealers that he can't name, all of that's absurd. The real issue here is that they have not been able to substantiate anything. They talk about a tape they haven't seen. They talk about sources they won't name. Yet they will name mobsters, people that they say are killers. So obviously they want to take more liberty with my life than they will with their sources, which shows that they have a political motive, but it's not going to work because we will never back down and let you guys dictate what's Boy, going to happen in our community. Have you, have you ever been compromised? Have you ever been compromised by any federal or government or state source because of your own dealings with narcotics. I have never had a dealings with narcotics. I've never been compromised, and I challenge him and anybody else to establish that. But I also, in fairness, raised the same question, is the fact that Newfield has a relationship with the governor, the fact that one of their investigative writers was on the payroll of the man he talks about I was going to run against in 78. Does that compromise their objectivity in looking at Al Sharpton? Barry? Mr. Bastone. Yes. 
I'll say this now, and I'll challenge you to this. Uh -huh. Meet me in Bedford Stuyvesant. Let you walk with me, just a minute, like a man. Drug dealers, and I want to know if you are printed where the drug houses are in your little village voice. I'll go. Can I go with them, Harry? Can I go with them? Yes. I'll go with you. Real you have a car? Huh? You have a car? Are you Let's walk it. Let's walk it. Let's walk it. Will you walk it? Will you put the address in the audience? No, will you print the address? Will you print the address? If he won't print the addresses, I'll give the addresses right. on national television. All right. Good. That means now that you and he will help us. This is, how, this is how you help the black community. <coughs> not trying to pick their leaders. You come with so me. So you agree to that? It's not That's a question cold. about picking leaders. But it's you, not a question of left. Them. It's not a question of right. It's about the politics it's of, of control. deception. Listen, it's a question of control. It's not control. It's politics. No, no, no. Sir, sir, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. First of all, first of all, you don't have the right. Who the leader is. And you're going to decide. We are going to help people. You're going to decide. Oh, to help people oh, tell who you are. You're helping by unnamed sources, quoting videos that you haven't seen. Mr. Bestone, do you deny it? Do you deny it? One of your attorney general's office. This is not stuff that's been grabbed out of the air. Sir, we've asked you to substantiate one. You haven't been able to name one source. You haven't been able to say you've seen one it's case. Is, what are you talking about? That is a paper what are you talking thin about? disguise to hide What behind? paper thin disguise? If you're dealing with evidence, Let the audience decide, decide if it's a paper thin thing. disguise because they're going to be the people who talk about this next. <laughs> Don't miss the special late-night edition of the Morton Downey Jr. Show, all next week at 11. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do, everybody. We've got our gentleman on the stand with us at home base. We're going to go to the studio audience. Because this guy's big and he looks tough, I'm not going to you first. I'm going to you. Here, sir. The one thing I'd like to say, I'd like to congratulate Reverend Al Sharpton on the issues of the crack houses and sh showing them to the public. But I disagree with all the publicity which is now being seen because instead of letting the issue die down, it's being exacerbated. It's being brought up more and more. Nice word. Let me hear that word again. Exacerbated. Very good. I thought you said something else. <laughs> and just like everyone else, Ed Koch, some things are said about him which aren't true. Some things are said about many people. When you're in the public eye, you deserve to get that attention. Everything some they say about me is true. Why isn't right everything there. they say about Sharpton true? No answer. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I'd just like to say, when I came in here tonight, I had my doubts about you, and I had the feeling that you had sold out to the black community. But after sold I've seen you here... Sold out to the black community or sold, sold out, out the black sold community? Sold out the black, black community. But after I've heard your views tonight and you've defended every point he's come up with, I want you to know that I appreciate all the things you're doing for the community, and I'm with you all the way. Thank you. Would you be willing to buy a, a ticket to the next uh, youth movement fundraiser? Excuse me? We don't have anyone scheduled. I said, would you, don't, don't listen would you to be, the poppy cut. We don't have any youth movement <laughs> fundraiser scheduled. Would you be willing to contribute to the national youth movement to help them with their work? If I knew a little more about it, and if it was for a good cause, sure. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. We'll right. find out later. Yes, sir. Come here. We haven't heard no, we haven't heard we don't know nothing about this guy except for that he gets up here. He's a liar and all he does is dodge every question that everybody asks. Start answering the questions and get off the ask one you want. Yeah. Well, wait a second, wait ask a second. One. He says to ask him a question. Ask yeah, who one. is he talking about? You know, do you know what ask for? You know what an informant is? An informant is a person who is a rat to protect himself after he has got caught with his finger in the socket. All right. You get it? Where, where was That's my finger caught in the socket? All right. Where was my finger caught in the socket? You got your finger in the socket. All right. Did he That's have what? his finger in the socket? Sure. He, How do you know? Again, back I Back it up. Listen, I can't back... No, but see, but boy, not everybody could be wrong. Not everybody could be wrong Who is about everybody? this guy. It's in every paper, every day, every newscast. This is the only guy who gets locked up and he's out of jail in five minutes. If I ever got locked up, I'd be in jail forever. If you agree with him, I Go ahead. 
you doing? Uh, Reverend Sharpton, I have a question for you. I agree that there's a problem with civil rights and, you know, the black movement. I think it's good, you know, the work you're doing. But basically, using these Martin Luther King type tactics, and I really don't think it's as serious as you say it is. I know there's a problem, but you're now, really... what is as serious as us, the civil rights problem, uh, the black problem. I think. I mean, are you talking about the Howard Beach and the Benson? Yeah, yeah. And I, th and I think it's well, bad more. Well, why, I, don't I think why don't you couch your question? Why don't you couch your couch your question this way? I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but why don't you ask the Reverend if, when he sees a racial incident takes place in a community, does he call the existing community leadership, or does he call the press first? Uh, I first of all, how do we know about an existing problem in the community? In Howard Beach, we were called by the family of the people that were victimized there. In Bensonhurst, we were called by the boys that were beaten up there, the attorney Vernon Mason. So, I mean, the question is not who do we call first. The question is how do we get the call? And if the situation is not as grave as we have said it is, then that means that all of these incidents didn't happen, and these people are just hallucinating. I think the situation is worse than we portrayed it to be. No, I'm, I'm saying, don't, don't you think? Go ahead, young man. Morning. I'd like to say uh, maybe two things here. I think that gentleman with the red tie over here may be one of the best ideas ever, putting people that uh, we know in the paper, Local crack dealers let the whole community go down there for themselves. We know where out. the houses are. Find out where the crack houses are. What well, better idea could you have than that? I and another that thing, if the FBI spent less time following Al around and didn't their, doing their jobs, we'd have a better country. That's right. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. I think they're following Al to see if they can break some other cases among his mob connections that he's alleged to have. How about you? Yeah, more. it seems like Al Sharpton is being compared to Martin Luther King. Uh, and without getting into all the semantics that's been going on here the last hour, I'd like to hear Reverend Sharpton tell us why he feels, if he does feel, he should be compared to Martin Luther King. So I, I don't done. think that anyone can be compared to Martin Luther King. I think that that is an exaggeration for anyone to try to make that comparison. I think that what we have tried to do... Uh, myself, Alton Maddox, Vernon Mason, and others, is do what we believe in. Is but I don't think any one of us approaches the status of a Martin Luther King. Is Alton Maddox a racist? Is he a racist? Does he hate white people? I don't believe Alton Maddox is a racist, no. no. Okay, we'll be back in just a second. We'll find out some other questions. Hey, if you like me at 9, you're going to love me at 11. Don't miss the special late-night edition of the Morton Downey Jr. Show, all next week at 11. We'll get some quick points in here fast. Let's I'd just go. like to make one point. The major problem, one big problem that I see here.